We are in this together. You have gifts that I don't have, and I have gifts that you don't have. That we must see. Now is the time. Because it's when we all get together that we will make the changes that we must make. We are the world. Welcome to Malcolm and We, seen and heard exclusively on MalcolmPresents.com, a uh, streaming network heard around the world and also, as far as we know, into outer space. Because we have no, we we have no limits. And this is my on the on the upper left hand side is my co-host Yana Larson, and Yana introduces to our guest. Thank you, Malcolm. Today, our guest is Summer Joy Raymer, and we are very happy to welcome her to our show. We are beginning an important time in our work as we collaborate with other major organizations involved in the movement of social change and justice and equity for all living things, as well as for the life of our planet and its ecosystems. Summer Joy is especially key to this movement as a leader for radical equal partnerships as a leader for compassion through somatic dance and embodied joyfulness, as a leader of women in the spirit of the divine feminine, and as a beautiful goddess among us. I know her husband, John Raymer, who has been a guest on our show, agrees with that signifier. As an evolutionary leader, a global chief joy officer of Compassion Games and Sign, International and Sign, and founder of Garden of Joy, Summer intends to upgrade all life to be a joy-filled bride with empowered angels creating peace on earth by 2030 and ultimately heaven on earth. Welcome, Summer Joy. It's a joy to have you here with us. It's been a joy getting ready and being here in this space with both of you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Thank tell, you. Tell us, tell us briefly what you do, why you do it, and how can we help? You know, I, I think right now at this particular time in my life, it's one of those kind of pivotal moments of recognizing a lot of the work of like trying to reach a place of aligning purpose and soul and dreams and that this is a time that I am living that really fully and still you know, with uh, more dreams to come, but that that everything is bringing me joy. That I I choose my reality and I choose where to be. And uh, you know, a, a lot of what I do is about serving others and serving this world. Especially, I think a lot about the Gandhi quote: "Be the change you wish to see in the world." That is uh, what I and weaving with every day, every moment, you know, and, and not just human to human, but how I'm treating um, the land that I'm stewarding at this time on Whidbey Island. I live in um, on the Coast Salish nations uh, land and waters here in the Pacific Northwest. But yeah, it, it's a it's a time of really showing up to what f is is the deepest calling. Yeah. But, but, but by the way, and it's you're, not you're, an easy time right now. I mean, no. you know, knowing that everything that's going on, and and I know we all know what we're talking about here, but it, it's still important to stay positive, and it's still important to think about what one person can do. That's my thing. It starts with one. Absolutely, and making space for all of the change and the crisis mm -hmm. and the pain that's going on in the world. I I feel that my joy and my dreams that it's it's expanding it's like making space for all of it you know is uh, is important for me um as i continue to grieve and also be challenged with with the times that we're in um and it makes the joy and purpose and where and why i'm here even more you know alive and uh true of of where I, what my intentions are. Yeah, your 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 yes, face is very awesome. expressive, and I could see the joy of what you do within your face, within the smile, within your eyes. I don't mm -hmm. know if anyone has ever told you that, but but I I, I see 
you know, we're coming out and uh, it, it's very alive in pictures. Oh, thank you, Malcolm. Yeah, no, I, think... oh, I told you she's a goddess among us. So yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I think, you know, being in community, the sense of the we, you know, I think a lot about that with our dear brother, Rick Olfek, and, you know, that 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 we space as I get so lit up. And I think there's something powerful about being in community that is really leaning into unity in the world. Um, it's easy to see and create the stories of where separation and duality is showing up. But I get really, really excited when I'm with people that are, you know, deep in their communities and doing that work that's about bringing us together, regardless of our differences and, you know, where and where we've come from and how we may seem um, like we have come from different perspectives. Like, I'm so interested in that, like, space between. What, well, it's so energizing. What is your, what is your project um, now? You know, it can be exhausting, time. but when you're with people like that, it is very energizing. I'm sorry, Malcolm, what were you saying? No, but, but if you would pick out a project, something that you're working on that's number one on your list, what well, are you, you doing? I think, well, part of why uh, Yana brought invited me here is the radical collaboration work that her and I are doing together that I think is very exciting. Well, tell um, us. Yeah, just within the last week, we um, brought all the grantees together. Um, so the nonprofit Compassion Games is kind of the umbrella organization for all the work that that I do um, in the world. And we get to be um, granteeing, um, working with collaboration with AmeriCorps um, here in the United States. Um, we are working with uh, AmeriCorps with the MLK Day of Service, which is actually in January. But there's this period of time that started in November and goes till the end of February that are all these different ways to kind of activate service. So we are grant, we're a part of, we're the admins in a sense, my husband and I, along with a beautiful team, Peter um, and Naomi, it's a father and daughter, and also beautiful gentleman, Bill, and we're all kind of on this team to support all these grantees. And the grantees are doing service projects around the MLK Day of Service, which is in January. But there's a lot of other events that are um, amplifying and supporting those projects and kind of in support of that. So one is in particular coming up um, in December called Enlightening Our Way Together, and that is a collaboration with um, indigenous led organizations to really focus on the wisdom and the projects and the, the experiences in the world that are, are really amplifying indigenous led voices. And so um, Dr. King and native tribal people, they, they had a very po powerful relationship. So there will be a weaving of um, amplifying these MLK projects that will be happening. So We the World, Charter for Compassion, Pato Bantan and Antoinette, they have an organization based in California. Um, there's uh, some really incredible projects happening in Seattle, Washington, which is very close to us, that do a huge event for um, Dr. Martin Luther King Day of Service. And so we are um, focusing on it not just being a day too, which I think is so important. It's actually there will be a weekend uh, around his birthday and the day of service are actually different days over a weekend. So there's an online event that will be happening um, mid-January that's um, a weekend that's kicking off as well 40 days of service yeah. that then will be closing um in wrapping up in uh, the end of February. And those three events, Enlightening Our Way Together, the MLK Weekend of Service, and the Convergence kind of closing of the 40 days are all online events mm -hmm. that are in support of physical events that are happening in communities all over the country. And of course, in support of the world. But the AmeriCorps, the, the grantee that projects that we're working on are funded in the US. How, how are they funded? Through AmeriCorps. So AmeriCorps is a federation. It's part of the, it's a branch of the government. And AmeriCorps, we've been working and, and being able to apply and have this grant 
that supports a lot of um, organizations around the world. So that's what we've been um, working with for the last uh, five years. And uh, we've been in support and been able to support the same projects every year, which I think is really key that it's not just a one-time thing. This has been something we've been working on for, uh, you know, through COVID times. And um, of course, those were challenging times because that was one of the first times where actually coming together physically for service projects during COVID was, was not possible in some communities. So the online space and, and, and creating community projects online became very important that we had this Zoom platform. And, but now, you know, things are shifting. COVID is still happening in some communities, but there are hybrid projects. So part online and part in person. But yeah, there's really been an evolution over the years that we've, we've witnessed. And as we found, there were lots of ways to volunteer while, you know, remotely and on online. I mean, I, I'm a volunteer and I have been working remotely the whole time. And, and, and that's how we were able to, uh, actually, we, our volunteer base really grew at that time because we were working with um, a lot of students who had to do, um, we're still working on service projects for scholarship applications and what, so we were able to really uh, tap into that and they were able to, to have that connection. So it, it, it is a really good way to do things. And as I was telling one of my coworkers today, um, you know, for those, I'm disabled, so I can't get out and do much, but I can still volunteer and feel like I'm being a contributing member of society and helpful because I can still use my mind and I know enough how to work on the computer. But, you know, I mean, it's a way that I can still feel like I can contribute. Um, and if everyone could have that attitude that, I, you know, I could do a little something here. I mean, yeah, I could give money, but of course I can't give money, but somebody could give money. And if they knew a oh, good place to give money to, that's something that's helpful. Maybe it's just bringing attention, um, you know, through other avenues, um, where you don't, you don't ha actually have to go out. And the idea is that there are lots of ways that you can help without, having to throw money or be there somewhere and as a reason for why you don't do anything to help your your fellow you know citizen of the world so you know it's win-win for everything and all of it matters you know I, I and I think online uh alone so just to give a little bit more context about these global convergence gatherings so that enlightening our way together and all of this that i'm speaking of all is happening in one world so that's one world dot earth and if you check out the events you'll see all these different global convergences and one of the things that happen all, all sorts of them every day yeah uh, well they, the global convergences happen seasonally throughout the year so it's, but it's, i mean the other things that you do as a as part of that convergence is happening yeah i mean it's all about collaboration in one world all the time but the one of the things that i just want to speak to malcolm that may be new to you is the global convergence spaces they're these multi-zoom spaces, people that have offerings and ways to create community and unity, uh, synergy making, um, you know, the people that are that are on the front lines, participating, wanting to create solutions. These global convergences are, are a really great space to share what it is you're doing and create more collaboration about what it is that you're offering. So there's a lot of opportunity for people's voices to get engaged. It's not kind of online summit where the content is already there and you just come into the Zoom room and you're just listening. It's an experience that everyone, that if you come into the Zoom room and even participate, there's a place for you. There's breakout groups. There's a way for all of us to co-create it, just to be clear. Um, in all of the global convergences, there's always a place called the hub and hub stands for here you belong. And that <laughs> space is open. So at, most of these convergences happen over an eight day period. So there are volunteers, speaking of volunteers, that <laughs> yeah, I think you've been in that space. I, I have. I, I'm more of the receptionist kind of person. <laughs> 
So imagine if you're coming into these Zoom space and you're not quite sure where to go or you're having tech issues or you're actually just, I don't know, having a, a an emotional moment. A moment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hub is, is, I just want to make sure everyone knows, is always there in these spaces. And that is a place really that that's at the heart of all these convergences, which is actually about building beloved community. And that is exactly what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is about, his legacy, his work, and and so much of the so it's not as much about the about the product or the actual event that happens. It's what's happening among us and how we're treating each other and recognizing that every single person belongs and creating that soft, compassionate grace, you know, is actually really what it's about. And it just happens. It's care. It's about care. Yeah. So that's really at the heart of all of these events that happen throughout the year. Well, 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 let's say someone is listening to this and they want to start and they want to, uh, as I, uh, I'm I'm very much into the ocean. They want, they want to dip their toes into it and see what it is. (laughs) What do you say would be an initial start for them to see what's happening and not be overwhelmed by the enormity of it. That's uh, as you're talking. And again, this is my first exposure to, you know, to your group. Yeah. There's, there's a certain enormity to that. And they go, Oh my God, you know, where, where do I start in it? What would you suggest how they start? Where did they go? Yeah, that's one world. So for those of you that don't know what that is, um, there's this amazing platform called mighty network and Mighty Network is um, a great place to create community. So, you know, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we're all familiar with these platforms. And, um, but a lot of those platforms also are created um, in a way to um, make advertisements on top of us. Mighty Network is not what, that's not what it's about. It's actually about authentic uh, community building with people and building trust so um, if you were to, to come to oneworld.earth, you're welcome to, to check it out. You don't have to like land in and create a profile. You can just come in and um, see. And there's some great like featured pop-up articles that would just are, are there when you come to that landing sort of page. And yes, there are a lot of, a lot of events and there's a lot of different parts of it. But my suggestion would be to, I mean, I I feel like this is an important suggestion for anything because there's always so many possibilities, right? Of directions and and exciting, sparkly things all the time on our phones. But my suggestion is to come in with the thought of what is the change that you want to be making in the world? What do you care about that you want to bring to this world? And to come in with that in your heart and see where you land. But there's, um, you know, uh, but that's where I would say is oneworld.earth. And And I'll invite them. Yeah. And there are lots happening in there. Um, But there's, uh, you know, weekly meetings that we do. Unity Earth is one of our um, collaborative uh, global organizations. Just just to interrupt you for a minute, uh, oneworld.earth. That's is it. that, that's one, is that the number one or, or spelled out the, the, the O-N-E? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's O-N-E, one world, yes, dot earth. So, okay. earth. yeah. And that'll and take- I'll send you an invitation link. And then what you're talking about, uh, you, uh, um, the Wednesday night, that's what you're talking about. It's at six yeah, o'clock. Eastern. It's a, that's a nice entry point into the community of the people that are very involved on One World. And um, Malcolm, you've come to that a few times. Yeah. So that's a, a, a collaborative, um, interactive, just community call that happens at 3 p.m. Pacific. Um, so I don't know what time zone you're making sure. He's to- in West Coast. I'm oh, Pacific. I'm Los Angeles. So. Yeah, I'm on the West Coast too. So uh, we often talk about Eastern Standard Time in One World just as a, a clarity. So I'll just say 6 p.m. EDT as well. well. We're, 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 we're about whereabouts on the West Coast, are you? Um, I my husband and I we live on Whidbey Island. Um, so just right in the heart of the um, Salish Sea here. So about 40 from here? Seattle. 
Yeah. Um, near Seattle. If you don't know Woodby Island, then I'll I'd say Seattle. No, I don't. I I personally don't know. I've never been to Seattle. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh very beautiful, and we're in the far upper left um quadrant of the U.S. Hmm. I've I've done more traveling in Europe than I have in uh, uh the, the United States. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Europe is uh pretty amazing or, or, or I, I drive through my most of it I go from New York to California California to New York occasionally drop but down you didn't Florida. drive you flew I bet no I, well, I drove several times mm -hmm. oh wow that's a long drive <laughs> we've done a lot of um road trips with the compassion torch by the way which is a a part of the sort of ceremonies and collaborations that our work stems from is um we received a compassion torch from uh, hereditary chief Bill Lane Jr. He's a, a dear collaborator and um, his cousin gifted us a staff at Standing Rock that became the compassion torch. So we've we've traveled, you know, through many of the states and with the torch sharing um, ceremony, which is Wopida, Wopida ceremony of g giving thanks and where people can share, you know, what where they're from what they're grateful for and what their wishes for the world and if i had the staff here i'd show it to you but it's just so powerful it's been in ceremonies in um ethiopia and uh india and um you know just incredible humans all over the world have shared their wishes for the world with it but yeah as a a, a part of this work is definitely online but we've also been driving and <laughs> traveling the world as well um, for peace. Yeah, I, I find out through the show, I, I get to, 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 to meet a lot of people and ask a lot of personal questions about them I mean, from all over the world that I normally, you know, some people say, how can you ask them that? Because I believe in, <laughs> you know, like, as you say, unity, that everybody has down to the core, no matter where they're from, uh, there's certain commonalities yeah and asking those questions especially with people like that may there may be a an awareness of a difference um i would say my my husband is is first to ask those questions and i think it's so important that we lean in and not just with the people that we feel were um i don't know speaking the the same thing the, the easy conversations to have but i um i'm so grateful for um, my family members that have very different views and I am so grateful that I'm so close with them and I can lean in and, and love into those differences. Yeah. And, and uh, those are like some of the most important relationships I feel at this yeah. time of such extreme, um, differences. Well, I, I was raised originally in Brooklyn and then moved to Manhattan and then yeah. from Manhattan, and then from Manhattan, I went into uh, Los Angeles. And there's so many ethnic groups that I was in, have been involved with. I love this. New York so much. Yeah. It's so but, 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 but then you realize that you go, when, when you cut across, when you cut, uh, drive across America, that there are people who don't know anybody else aside from their individual groups. Yeah. Yes. And, and you say, oh, my God, how could this happen? I've never. never been further west than New York City. <laughs> no, no, no. They've never, they've never been like, uh, you know, uh, five, ten miles away from their hometowns. Right, from where they were born and raised. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't relate to that because I've been everywhere myself, um, and I'm glad. The only two states I haven't been in are Alaska and Florida. Oh, I haven't <laughs> been to Florida yet either. And Good, oh, I, we're one of the two people who haven't been to Florida. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, and until DeSantis is uh, uh, change, I, I get very political. Yeah, especially in, in times like this. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a really it. I think one of the biggest eye opening experiences has been my road trips around the country because I'm the west coast so near seattle i wouldn't say it's new york city but it's very i mean known to be a very progressive california you know cosmopolitan vibrant yeah Talk about difference when you're driving yeah. through arkansas or driving through west virginia i mean it's, yes. it's i mean this country has so many different worlds in it i mean yes. it's wild 
every time I drive, the, the, drive across the country or do long trips, I always get into the Woody Guthrie song. This land is your land. This land <laughs> yes, is my land. Is from mine. California. And that's the key part. This land is made for you and, you and me. That is so key. And it is amazing and so powerful to listen to music like that when you're in the lands where like, whew, where those the reason those songs are even made, you know, to yeah. drive and feel that, and you know, uh -huh. get through the Appalachian yeah. mountain, mm -hmm. like and every, and and everybody that I know, I've ever spoken to, feel that. Yeah, I, I right. mean, they feel the magnificence of nature, the magnificence oh of nature in this country. Oh my gosh, I mean. Yeah, I get literally, I have like spirit, I call it spirit bumpies where from my head to my toes, just like, mm -hmm. oh, as you say that, because I feel like one of the first experiences I had where I really was in love with this place, this country, Turtle Island, was um, from the road trips that um, just recently my husband and I have, have been wanting to really connect to the national parks and, you know, um, just this year, um, in the spring, we drove, I saw the Grand Canyon for the first time. Mm. Oh my God. And, but it wasn't just the national parks. It was the, the traveling, one of the most beautiful, like, I didn't even feel like I was on planet earth was driving from, um, page Arizona through, uh, from Bryce Canyon, to Page, Arizona was one of the most extraordinary drives of my entire life. I did not feel like I was on planet Earth. I know that I was, but I'm just, <laughs> I, but it was just like, oh my God, like recognizing it's like, this is like a part of my, my body, these places, like yeah. to finally experience them and like land my bare feet onto the earth in these like pink, you know, coral shades. Yes. Of, it's just extraordinary and I think I feel it's a part of how we can stay on planet earth right now is to to feel the the earth and what she is trying to do to support us right now um that we all want those places those wild beautiful sanctuary places to be protected I don't know anyone right. on whatever like and that to me is kind of like the um, meeting in the middle of all the different arguing and all the blame games and all this stuff. It's like, where, what are the things that, where can we meet in the middle? Oh my God. Let's all go to the ground. Yeah. Well, and so and I grew up in Colorado in Boulder. And so I, we never went anywhere, but Nebraska, cause that's where my grandma was. So when I was growing up in Colorado, the only place that we went to was in Colorado. So all over the state, mostly the, the, you know, in the continental divide and the, in the western slope but you know so i grew up with an appreciation for uh, i still think of myself as an outdoorsy mountain girl which i'm not anymore but that's yeah, but, that's me inside and uh, but, but, but yeah, i like so yeah. don't grow up with that you know my, my two sons love going camping love going to hiking and yeah. going to different uh you know regions yes and, and, and it's sort of I, I can sort of live ethereal through them. <laughs> you live vicariously. Vicariously, you know, they, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, you can see all their pictures, and you don't have yeah. to camp in the rain. And, 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 and there's sort and of hikes that, they first like, <laughs> yeah, that, that I can't do anymore. Yeah, right. So physically, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't I'm either. Not, but I'm glad I got to. I'm not in my twenties. Yeah, my, yeah. Speaking back when you mentioned Grand Canyon, uh, when I went down the Grand when I first went to the Grand Canyon, which was about probably close to 50 years ago, I went back. Uh, I, I was on a, uh, a, a don I don't know, donkey mules or asses down. <laughs> yeah, down and too. Yeah. And, yeah, that's and, cool. they, and they had these narrow roads, narrow, narrow trails. Yes, very. And narrow. when they stopped, yeah. and the, the tour guide would, uh, you know, look down, the the donkeys would look over, put their head off, and and and, and the uh, 
a guide would say, "Don't worry, we've never lost a uh, we've never lost an animal yet." <laughs> what about the person on the, right, the people? I, I held on, but when I got yeah. down there, and I'm not used to riding horseback, right? My legs, were, you know, said, you're like bow legged because you're using the muscles yeah. you never use. <laughs> Yeah. And especially when you're nervous, you're holding tight. <laughs> totally, I was going to say, holding on for dear life. Yeah, but yeah. but 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 I, you know, to this day, fifty years later, I I saw the magnificence of that. Yes, it's so magnificent. It's why we have the word magnificent in exactly. every single human. Like, if we could just, can you just imagine all of the um, conflict on planet Earth? If we all just gathered at the edges of the Grand Canyon together, mm. I just swear all of our conflict would just dissolve into yeah, the well, well, anything. I, I'm I'm a beach person. I love beaches. I love walking on the beach. I, I love, you know, beaches where you could walk miles. Even if something is tried, you know, as common as... I had a house in Fire Island, a summer house in Fire Island. And 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 in the morning, and this time I was I was into running. As a matter of fact, I had done marathons. But I could wake up about six o'clock in the morning and run the beach five miles one way, five miles back again. You know, in the heart wow. in the heart sand. Ooh. And, wow. and, and then and, and then splash when the water came in and you know, raised my legs up high. Well, I and I you. always felt when I look at the beach, I say, this is here millions and millions of years. Mm -hmm. The way is crashing. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I felt like very part of the world. Yes, so important. Well, I say that everybody should live in a teepee for a while and really appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, how many people can do that? <laughs> anyway, Summer, if you heard the beep, 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 that oh, was the end no. of our show. Oh, yeah, that one. Ah, so you it, better. Is, is there anything you want to leave us with? Uh, hmm. uh, what, what was most important e uh, uh, email you want us to uh, go to to see what, what what you guys are doing? You know, and beyond email, it's oneworld.earth. And what's really One cool World. is Earth. you can um, private message there. There's It's really the purpose of that space is to socially you know, collaborate and support each other and, and really collaboration. Okay. That one is world, the, the, o, o -N -E, world. O -N -E. world. And one last thing I would just say too, is really been uh, a joy to be here with both of you and appreciating what you are witnessing in my eyes. I'm, I'm appreciating from you, Malcolm and Yana, your, um, experiences of the Grand Canyon and all of that and what I hear in both of you is that you you don't do that anymore that you can't camp or you know I, I like to to challenge those places in all of us that we say we don't do anymore um and that is something that I will leave you with that I, a lot my the origins of my soul is the garden of joy and I feel there's an important place that we all need to, you know, if it's closing our eyes and connecting to that beach that you would jog on when you were younger, Malcolm, and to like feel into that, that and how that can continue to nourish you in this chapter of your life that maybe you're not still jogging, you know, and, <laughs> and Yana, the, the TP that were, you know, um, but I, I love to challenge those places that we're closing ourselves off in because I do feel that these are the times for our joy to really the volume needs to be turned up like it's a serious need in this yeah. world oh I agree yeah connect even if it's just to close our eyes in the moment and remember uh, yeah i really yeah, do well, I, say, I, I, I can't do it now i did <laughs> vicariously i get it through my kids when they come back whether or, or, or my my son loves sunsets so he's always he has his uh you know cell phone he's he sends back he instagram the sunsets and to me i you know i love sunsets it's sort of each one is unique they are and, oh my gosh and, and, and i've lived on, I, i've lived on both coasts Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I've seen sunsets. As a matter of fact, br brief story. Uh, I was I was living out in California. I moved out here in '77, and like in the middle of the year, 
I was I was watching a movie, uh, a Woody Allen movie. Oh yeah, those are good. And I, I don't know if it was Annie Hall, but the picture opens up with uh, a Rhapsody in Blue, which is one of oh. my favorite symphonies. Gershwin, yeah. Yeah, George Gershwin. And yeah. it opens up with the sun rising. Uh, so you see the sun rising in Central Park. Hmm. Could be Annie Hall. And and with the Rhapsody in Blue and the Central Park. And I literally, I almost left the movie theater, took a plane and moved back to New York. <laughs> I mean, was, so many of his films. Look what Summer is saying. Remember the joy that we felt in those places, and keep them, keep them uppermost in keep our. Up. Anyway, guys, yes, hate yes, to say yes. this, but we have to say thank you for all your work, and I'm sure you uh, will get maybe get together with you and John. It should be nice to see how you guys interface. Yeah, we we were fun. We we. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, peace. And again, thanks for, the, thanks for the good work. Go well, from we, me to we. <laughs> right, let's do that. <laughs> I was Bye. Say. Bye. Thanks so much. <laughs> the objective of the organization We the World is to facilitate cooperation on a global scale amongst groups and individuals dedicated to implementing solutions to the many challenges we face on the planet at this time.